Welcome back to this week's tips and tricks and this week's tips and tricks we're going to be doing a high sky and I'm going to be teaching you how to achieve the max amount of cash on the Pacific Standard Highs. Now this won't guarantee that you'll get it but it's a very high chance that you will pretty much almost guarantee yourself getting max cash on Pacific Standard. So pretty much for size you want to have the highest finale set up and then whoever's crowd control wants to go on top of this table and just stay there with an RPG and that will keep the intimidation bar at max for the rest of the heist. Now, I'm pretty certain only the RPG works and I'm not sure if the home and launcher works but I don't think it does. Now, I'm just going to fast forward this little snippet on this heist here. Now, pretty much all you want to do once you are on top of the table with an RPG, you just want to either just look up into that corner where I'm aiming because then that way in case if you do hit the trigger button and fire an RPG it won't kill anyone. Now, the other guy for crowd control, he can either be on the table next to you with an RPG doing the same thing you are, or he can go up to around the corner where those stairs are and just kill off all the guards that come inbound. Now, the hacker and the demolition want to carry on doing the heist as normal and proceed to the vault. Now, once the hacker is in the hacking menu, the demolition guy can come all the way back up and take out those guards. Now, the hacker... Once the hacker finishes doing the hacking, it will force a cutscene to appear which will teleport the demolition guy who was just taking out the guards up top all the way back down to the vault. Now the demolition wants to then open up the other door. Now only one person wants to collect the cash because then it reduces the risk of being shot and losing cash. So the other guy, whoever's like not taking the cash, can just take out the guards up top. Now for the rest of this section of the heist, you just want to be patient and wait for the, whoever's collecting both piles of the cash to collect both piles. So you just want to be patient while waiting and then once he finally does collect both piles and you're ready to proceed on to the next step, just meet up back at the entrance of the bank. Now while he's proceeding all the way up the stairs to the entrance of the bank, make sure to have someone secure up top because usually there is sometimes a guard that spawns and then sometimes he will actually come out and then try to inflict damage onto the guy coming up from the vault. So just be your heads up for that. Now make sure to not have noose cord when doing this heist because it is a bit annoying. Now this part here I just decided to go under my bank because while I'm waiting I always just decide to like deposit cash or whatever. Yeah, so once you finally get to the part where everyone's regrouped at the main entrance of the bank, all you want to do is just open up the doors activate the cutscene and then bam you want to continue as normal with the heist. Now whoever's got the cash wants to stay back behind the doors preferably behind where the ATMs behind that wall right there while the other three members who don't have anything can just run out take out all the cops just as a normal procedure. Now the easy way to do this is with an RPG but be careful when blowing up like while firing an RPG because as you just saw there I accidentally hit my mate but don't worry, it didn't do any damage to him. Now, from this point onwards, once the closest killer, you, all you want to do is the guy with the cash is to step outside the bank, pass those stairs, and then just walk back inside the bank. Now, from this point onwards, pretty much you want to have one guy follow the exact path down the alleyway, and then do all the checkpoints and head over to where the bikes are. Whereas the other two want to protect. So, as I am doing right here, I'm right next to the bank so no one can actually go through the entrance and do any damage losing cash. Whereas my other teammate has gone down the alleyway a bit, well to the road, and will take out all the helicopters trying to shoot at my mate who's going to the bikes. Now you want to have that guy covering for the guy who's running to the bikes so then it's easier. Now once the guy who's finally made it to the bikes, all you want to do is wait for him to commit suicide after he has blown up the bikes. Now as you can see right there, he's just blown up the bikes and now he's just committed suicide. Now from this point onwards, it will cause the heist to fail but it will activate the next checkpoint. So pretty much you just skip to step in the heist. So from this point onwards, all of you want to restart the heist and it will restart from the next checkpoint. Now once all of you have restarted, you want to be patient because it will bring you to the clouds on the loading screen on GTA 5 and you know how slow they are. But anyway, from this point onwards, you want to have one guy Preferably who has an RPG, run up to the bikes and blow up the bikes again and then someone 
who owns the apartment, for this instance it's going to be me because I own the apartment right next to the bikes and you want to make sure you have an armored Karuma stored in the garage. Now pretty much you want to run straight into the garage because at this instance if you run straight there then you can just get straight in and the cops won't see you. So once you find a load into your garage just get into the armored Karuma and then just simply drive out the garage and pick up everyone in your heist team that's waiting outside of your apartment. Now the guy with the cash wants you hide back where the bikes are up the stairs where it's safer whereas everyone else in the heist team wants to stay outside just shooting everyone or the cops. Now don't do what we just did here which was switch whoever was driving because that doesn't really matter who drives and what unless you want to have someone that's a really good driver drive then that's down to you. But anyway, so once you get the armored Karuma outside the garage, pick up everyone, just drive back to where the bikes are, and as you can see, we had the guy with the cash just hiding up those stairs there, and then pretty much, once we picked him up, we just want to follow the route. Now, you can take any route as long as you lead all the way to the dinghy at the end in the canyon. Now, make sure the guy that collected both piles of the cash back from the highs, make sure he is not driving the armored Karuma, because if he drives the armored Karuma, then it completely ruins his tactic, which will reduce the risk of losing money from taking damage. Now, the thing is, right, so this is the reason why the guy with both piles of money shouldn't be driving. Okay, so pretty much, he wants to be either in the back seat, because then you're less exposed, and there's a less chance of you getting shot if you're in the back. So pretty much once the guy, whoever has the money, is sat in the back, pretty much all they want to do is stay ducked down. And on PlayStation, it's, you have to hold on X. I'm not sure what it is on Xbox. But pretty much he wants to stay ducked for the whole journey. So then if the cops do manage to shoot in, they pretty much won't do any damage to him. And if the guy that's driving does actually collide into obstacles, because of the construction that the police have set up trying to block you off then it won't do anything and you won't lose any cash anyway but anyway so once you actually pass for the bridge we're not going to do the tactic where you just go straight to the dinghy now pretty much what you do is pass that bridge and just go slowly up to the left up this mountain before the entrance to the tunnel now you just want to go straight through the tunnel now from this point onwards it's pretty simple but at the end of this route, make sure no one jumps out the car. Because if someone jumps out the car, then it's completely ruined. And then you have to redo the process, and then you might have the chance of losing cash. So pretty much, the best way to do this is trying to do it all in one go. Not messing up from this part onwards. But anyway, so pretty much all you want to do is, once you exit the tunnel, take the path to the left instead of following the actual GPS to the right. And what it'll do is, once you pass this little bridge here, stick to the right side of the railing there, and it'll activate the checkpoint for that. Now from this point onwards, just carry on following the road all the way up to the Ultras camp. Now from this point onwards, you just want to go a bit off-road, and then you want to get as much acceleration as possible and go up the mountain right next to the Ultras camp. Now once you've gotten up to past that part there, you want to go slow because you want to go slowly back onto the road. So you want to try and decelerate your speed and go slow. Now from this point onwards, what you would normally do is jump off, but don't. So from this point onwards, just go slow, activate the trap point, and then back up a bit. And you see this little part here, it'll allow you just to go down very nice and easy. So it's very gentle weight down the mountain. And from this point onwards, you pretty much got max amount of money in the bag from this point onwards. Just make sure to go slow and steady down the mountain. And make sure the guy who has both piles of the money is ducked down in the car so it reduces the risk of taking damage. Uh, from this part onwards, you pretty much sorted. You just got to drive to the dinghy. Now here's a quick summary of what to do to get max amount of money. Crowd control with an RPG on top of the table. One person, either demolition or the hacker, collects both piles of the money. Just one person has to collect both piles and then simply once you get the both piles of the cash regroup at the entrance of the bank and then simply just wait for the guys who don't have the money just to simply clear out all the enemies outside the bank and then once it's clear outside the bank the guy with the money exits the bank and then re-enters the bank and then whoever's going to go to the bikes make sure he goes down and then everyone else is protecting the guy with the money inside the bank whereas the guy who goes to the bikes make sure he blows up the bikes and then kills himself and then from that point onwards 
it will restart the checkpoint and then you just want to simply blow up the bikes and go to the armored Karuma located in that garage that you have purchased and then just head straight to the dinghy and you're sorted. And by doing this method it almost guarantees you to get max amount of cash almost every time when you're doing Pacific Standard. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this tips and tricks and I guess I'll see you guys in the next video.